Luis Almagro, thanks for joining me on Upfront. The situation in Venezuela is pretty dire right now. You have a massive economic crisis there, rampant inflation, hospitals running out of medicines, uh, protests that have led to dozens of deaths. Uh, you've called for President Nicolas Maduro to stand down and for a new presidential election to be held ASAP. But what's the actual likelihood of that happening? This is not a struggle for power, it's a struggle for democracy. What we need there are elections. <clears throat> if Maduro wins elections, that's fine for me. The problem here is that fundamental freedoms and human rights are completely put down by the regime that is killing people in the streets, killing peaceful demonstrators, that a regime that completely has his hands with blood. And that is the main problem that we have in the country. That's why <clears throat> when you have a dictatorship, the only way out are democratic elections. And, and why and, we have and, called but, for that. But do you actually think that's going to happen, is what I'm asking? They will have to happen. Okay. All dictatorships have fallen down okay, so at a certain moment. You call it a dictatorship, then, and we'll come yes. back to whether or not okay. it is a dictatorship. Yes. The Venezuelan government will point out that they are an elected government. They won an election. In yeah. 2018, they're saying there will be another presidential election. Um, they say your organization, the OAS, has become an inquisition tribunal. Um, and the question is, why not let the democratic process play out? You say you support democracy. Yes. Wait for the next presidential elections. Wait for Maduro to win or lose. You know what is the problem? Mm. The legitimacy of the government. Elections should be held last year. Held last year. That presidential was elections? Recall referendum. The recall referendum that was stolen for, uh, from the people. That was needed to have, the, the Venezuelan government needed to have it last year. They didn't do it. And that is the biggest problem. The legitimacy of origin was completely killed then. Of course, and the government would say there were irregularity of signatures in, in terms no, of that process. That, that is not a, but it was an elected government. You accept that Maduro was elected to office. But what in I a say, presidential election that was accepted say, by the OAS, the US, the EU. What, the, what I say is the legitimacy of origin of this government was killed when they denied the recall referendum to the people. OK. We will come back to the whole uh, democratic nature of the government. Just on you and the OAS and the position you've taken, when you were foreign minister of Uruguay, you were full of praise uh, for Chavez uh, and said he had reinvented Latin America for President Hugo Chavez, Maduro's predecessor, and that everybody should follow his example, you said. Uh, even as recently as 2015, you called President Maduro a friend and said he wanted to do good uh, for the people of Venezuela. How have you gone from saying that to saying Venezuela is a dictatorship, that Maduro is a traitor to his people? Because in the space of 18 months. Yeah, because things happened since then. And what things happened? <clears throat> the complete deterioration of the institutions in Venezuela. <clears throat> Lack of elections for regional or uh, governors or uh, the recall referendum. Um, they have put down the separation and independence of uh, different branches of government. They co-opted the judicial power. They and that's have, all happened since you called they, him a good friend of yours. They have. No, there was no issues. They the have. day you called him a good friend, everything was fine in Venezuela. Look, uh, if you see, this, this crisis have uh, been triggered by the election of the National Assembly in December uh, 2015. Yeah, that's, uh, that's the, and that's the problem. <clears throat> when the things, all the problems have started. And what we are fighting here is for democracy and human rights. What we are like fighting here is separation of different branches of government, for an independent and, judiciary. And in the not short for, term, to, you want to, to have, stop the violence. Not to have political prisoners. Okay. Because that is what we are fighting for. And in for. the short term, I'm guessing you want to stop the violence and get some kind of resolution, peaceful resolution, I'm guessing. Is that the OAS's goal? Uh, that is uh, the idea of the OAS and the meeting of uh, Minister of Foreign Affairs for the next 31st of May. So let me ask you this. The OAS, your organization, the Organization of American States, it's been described as a sort of UN for the Western Hemisphere by some. It could have perhaps played a mediating role between the government and the opposition in Venezuela had you not come out so strongly against the government. Even your former boss, Jose Pepe Mujica, former president of Uruguay, you served under him as foreign minister, even he said that what you're doing is dangerous and that with regards to Venezuela, you should be trying to, quote, be a bridge and not take sides. He's got a point, hasn't he? No, because I ha I'm permanently building bridges. I am permanently making proposals. I am permanently when you looking for member look governments looking petty for dictatorships solutions and traitors. I said, is that I said, building bridges? If, if, what I said is, if you don't have the recall referendum, then you will lose your legitimacy of origin, and then you will become a petty dictatorship. Oh, so they're not a petty dictatorship right now. Yes, they are. Because okay. they have not, and you think that, that helps referendum. bring them. You think that helps, um, right? Whether they are or not, put that to one side for a moment, and we will come back to that. What? Do you think such language to, to, to listen to the former president of Uruguay, your former boss? Do you think that helps build bridges and bring people to the table? The problem is impunity. 
you, we cannot provide impunity to this kind of actions. When you are, we are talking about people dying so in the streets. So you would streets. rather, we are you would talking, rather we be are able to condemn about, them we are, than actually come to a solution? Talking, we are talking about a regime that has blood in its hands. Yes. We are talking about a regime that okay. has political so, prisoners. We are talking about a regime so that condemnation torture people. And, that torture people. Yes. And the no one's defending is, those the things. Thing is that, the thing but, is that we have an agenda. And the agenda, yes. what is the request the agenda? The agenda requests to have... <clears throat> The recognition of the National Assembly, yeah. to have an independent exactly. judiciary power. Exactly, but to power. get those things done, don't have, you to need have to a recall referendum, have a diplomatic to, not process? Not to have any more political prisoners. So how do you get that there? You're just, to it's, make these are the, all great words. To make the regime. But how do you no, bring Venezuela to the table? And these are not words. These I'm asking are a very simple question. This is an agenda. No, it's not an action. To say this you want to agenda. release political prisoners this is an aspiration. Is an this how is do you an get agenda. it done? Does your language help bring Venezuela to the table, yes or no? Yes, it does. Are they it coming does. to the table at the end it of the does. month? Are look, they coming to the next look, OAS meeting? If you, this is a very simple one. Are okay. they coming to the next OAS meeting? I will answer the previous question because you made an okay. order of these questions, um, okay. and so I will answer, and then okay. I will answer this one. Any time that they have a problem in the continent, I work on the basis of dialogue, mediation, and negotiation. I have done that with all the countries mm. in this region. <clears throat> with Venezuela, these proposals reached the government. I am completely sure. And there were reasonable uh, solutions for the institutional crisis that the country has. So the bridges are permanently there, and I am permanently okay. working on these bridges. So you gave that and, answer. And this, are they coming to the next OAS meeting? Yes, but you, uh, no, they are, they are but not is, coming. They, they are, are not, not coming. They are so not your language coming. hasn't helped bring them but, to the table. But you know what? But that is something that you should know. This meeting that will be held on the 31st of May was a meeting proposed by the countries out of the procedure of the Inter-American Democratic Charter that we ac okay. activated some, um, some months ago. The thing is that this activation of this n different procedure, that is the consult of the, the meeting of the Minister of Foreign Affairs, is in parallel of what we have been doing. Okay. So the presence or not presence is mostly related okay. to the different actions in a different pattern that w the, whose initiative was initiative of the countries and I Fine. completely support. In an open letter to the imprisoned Venezuelan opposition leader Leopoldo Lopez in August of 2016, who you addressed in that letter as an esteemed friend, you said that he embodies the hope of the people. Now, of course, there shouldn't be any political prisoners in any country in Latin yes. America. I think we all agree on that. Yes, but right. should you really be so openly siding with the opposition, and in particular with an opposition leader who's been linked to the 2002 coup attempt against President Chavez, and who even the U.S. State Department once said has a reputation for being, quote, arrogant, vindictive, and power hungry, is how he was described. Yeah, but uh, what, what part of the question do you want me to answer? All of them, I guess. So, well, should uh, you be so biased thing, I, to the I'm opposition? Not, I'm not on the side of the opposition. He really? Is, is a struggle. When you call someone the hope of the for, people, sounds like an struggle, endorsement to it's me. It's a struggle for democracy. A struggle for democracy, what does it mean? That nobody can be in jail because of prison. But you didn't reason. say, I yeah. hope you should be released from prison alone. But you that, said, you that, are the that, hope of the people, my it. esteemed friend. Yeah. Sounds pretty biased. But no, but once. Is once he is free, once Leopoldo Lopez is free, he won't be an esteemed friend. Definitely, definitely, we have a different pattern of institutionality in the country. So he's the hope of the people as long as he's behind once, bars. Once, once, he's out, once he's out of jail, once he's out of jail, he is. He, that he is in prison is definitely a problem for the country. But as a I said, not, that wasn't Lopez. my question. My yes. question was, are you showing complete bias by referring no. to the leader of the opposition no. as a no. esteemed friend yes. and the hope of the people? I, all my, my The language my again, your language no, again is a problem. Is that, no, it's not the language that is a problem. <laughs> the language is not a problem in we this case. We have a very different the, understanding of what no, hope of the people means. Definitely though. not, definitely not. Because a, any time you say, Somebody, so you see the suffering of somebody yeah. in jail. You see the suffering of the family. You see how this person still fights for democracy and human rights, even that he's in jail. Yeah. Then it's obviously the connection. Everyone about the will agree for on human rights in, in, and people in, in prison. The, I think they will be worried about your obvious. bias towards an opposition leader who has but his own track line. record, which the it's U.S. State Department has even criticized. Anybody. I mean, I receive practically every member of okay. the opposition as I receive any member we'll of the government. We'll have to agree to disagree on what, what aligning counts. everybody. Uh, you uh, say President Maduro is a dictator. 
he and his supporters obviously say he's an elected president. He says he's going to have another election next year. Uh, you say the, the, the lack of the recall referendum makes him a dictator. Yeah. Um, we can uh, argue... And the lack of the elections of, uh, region for regional uh, okay, elections. So can, and the lack so we, of separation of branches. So we can argue about... And the political prisoners and the judiciary You've made that point several times. Uh, yes, we but can you argue. think you don't remember can, when you can, make... No, no, I remember. My Why, point, well, then you no, no, we go I remember. There. We go there. Yes. A dictatorship, it comes Fine. with all so, this... So you made your case for the fourth or fifth time that he's a dictator. I hope he would, don't, we will not have he to do would it make again. his case. Well, he would make his case. He's not here to defend himself that he's an elected president. Okay. So you two can disagree, old friends. What I would question you on is you don't just say he's a dictator. You've said Venezuela's civic military regime represents the worst of every dictatorship. When you say the worst, are you seriously saying Venezuela under Maduro is worse than, say, North Korea or China or Saudi Arabia? Really? Look, if you read the complete paragraph, you see the justification of every single point. A tyrannical regime that <coughs> oppresses fundamental freedoms, that has political prisoners, <coughs> that kills people in the streets, that has armed gang bangs killing people in the streets. <coughs> All that. But you can all criticize that. alleged all human that. rights abuses all that. without comparing all a country that. to, say, North all Korea. That. Surely you must get that, Luis different, Almagro. Different Surely element. a man who is a former different foreign minister element. and diplomat because must understand because, how that language you know, comes The president across. of Myanmar, you know also that, and it's not a phrase, it's a phrase that I put in another, that a parody of democracy is worse than a dictatorship. And what do you think Venezuela will look like four or five years from now? I. Uh, we can only hope it will be a democracy and with full respect of human rights and that the country can trigger their economy and productive system again. I hope for them the best. Luis Almagro, thank you for joining me on Upfront. Thank you. A thank pleasure. You.